Here to break down the politics of the week is Gabriel DiBenedetti, national correspondent for New York Magazine. He is in Charlottesville, Virginia. Gabe, we'll get to that virtual convention in a minute, but let's start with the pick of Kamala Harris as the vice presidential candidate along with Joe Biden. How is this being viewed right now by the party? Well, most people in the party are pretty excited about this. There was a lot of apprehension because, of course, Joe Biden did take quite a long time to make his choice. But in the end, it was in line with traditional timing just before the convention. Harris, of course, is a historic pick as the first black and first Asian American uh, person on a ticket, uh, the first black woman, I should say, on the presidential ticket. And while she is a fairly liberal senator, she is pretty much within the center of the party in many ways. So I think a lot of people were pretty excited to see her added. One of the things the campaign has already started focusing on has been the handling of the coronavirus response from the Trump administration. How effective has that been so far? Well, if you look at the polling numbers, the Biden team and a lot of Democrats would say very effective in the sense that Joe Biden does tend to have a fairly large lead here. But it isn't because he's been doing all that much work really on that messaging. It's really because of the president's handling itself. This is the overwhelming crisis that everyone is dealing with right now, whether you look at it as a health care issue or as an economic issue. These are all wrapped together. And of course, when we have tens of millions of people out of work, uh, hundreds of thousands of people dying and many more sick, it's sort of an un inescapable thing. Thing. And naturally, the election is going to be then viewed as a referendum on the president. Michelle Miller here in the Democratic National Convention starts, albeit virtually, on Monday. What do you expect the messaging will look like? Well, Joe Biden's messaging has actually been fairly consistent from start to finish when he launched his campaign. He said, always said that this is the battle for the soul of the nation. And it's not very subtle. Of course, what he's saying is we have to take the country back from Donald Trump in his words. But one thing that we're going to see is a really wide spectrum of speakers. You have John Kasich, who's, of course, a former Republican governor of Ohio who ran against Donald Trump, speaking on the same night as Bernie Sanders, who's, of course, as progressive as they come. So what the messaging really is going to be is you don't have to be a liberal. You don't have to be a progressive to vote for Joe Biden. You have to just not like what's going on right now. There's going to be a lot of messaging about the restoration of the soul of the nation in Joe Biden's words. Yeah, messaging on range there. It's, it's becoming increasingly clear that this election will be unlike any other. Mail-in ballots and the Postal Service itself are at the center of this political yeah. debate. So will Trump's hardball approach there uh, have political repercussions? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more of an actual voting issue than a political issue. Obviously, voters don't like to hear that their Postal Service is having issues because people do really rely on the Postal Service. But what a lot of folks are very worried about is, of course, because of this pandemic, there's going to be massive reliance on mail-in val ballots. And if the Postal Service is underfunded, as it currently is, it certainly looks like a lot of people's votes may not be counted or there might be big issues with that. So there's a lot of apprehension in the Democratic side in particular. And now that President Trump has essentially come out and said that one of the reasons he's underfunding the Postal Service is because of mail-in ballots. Uh, there's a real push on the Democratic side to make sure that every ballot can be safely counted uh, in enough time. And what looks very likely now is we may not know, well, it's unlikely that we will know the full extent of the vote in a lot of these swing states on election night. So we should really be preparing for an election week, especially if the Postal Service continues to have all these issues and doesn't get more funding. Okay, Gabriel Di Benedetti from New York Magazine. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.